This podcast contains strong language and adult themes. Date Night China explores life and love for better relationships in China. Every week, we hear from different guests and dive into dating, relationships, mental health, and how both expats and Chinese people connect with each other here in China. Join the Date Night community through our podcast and events in Beijing and Shanghai, and catch up on all the latest stories on our official WeChat account. Find our account on WeChat by searching Date Night China. No spaces, no capital letters. You can also join our WeChat group by adding Rachel, me, on WeChat. You can search Rachel Weiss twenty two, R A C H E L W E I S S twenty two. And now for this week's episode. Welcome back, China daters, to episode ten of Date Night China. This week, we are talking to Shanice, who's an American who's lived in China for eight years, and she just got married to her Chinese partner at the end of lockdown in Shanghai. Oh, it's crazy! It's, it's crazy. crazy, yeah. So they had a very intense time there, and then got married. Weird celebration. It was awesome.、Uh, so she shares with us about their intercultural relationship. Being a Black American woman in China, and what their experience was like during lockdown in Shanghai. Shanice is a North Carolina native from the U.S. that has majored in Chinese and has been living in Shanghai for the past eight years. She's the founder of various local vegan community groups, including Vegans of Shanghai and Shanghai Vegan Foodies. She has a background in translation, social media, and localization. And it's fun those vegan mentions. She is、uh, going to tell a story about how she met her partner because it of plays these, in, it plays yeah, into their because romance because of these vegan communities.、Um, and she's also fluent in Chinese, which is very cool. She,、uh, Shanice is somebody. It was a, it was a great conversation. Yeah, it was just really chill. It was, it really, was、nice. really chill. And she's somebody I followed and found out a lot about lockdown in Shanghai on social media. She's very active on TikTok, Instagram, and all of that. So that's how I found out about her and her marriage. I was like, what? They just got married. So it was very cool talking to her. It's a great episode. So enjoy. Hi, Shanice. Thank you so much for joining us today. How are you? Thank you for having me. I'm good. How are y'all? Very well, thank you. Very yeah, well in、uh, Beijing.、Uh, Beijing getting back to normal, but that's very different from Shanghai getting back to normal. I imagine. Oh yeah. <laughs> So you guys have kind of reopened back up recently, right? Well, I went and bought pants today, so that, that <laughs> happened. That was like, I was able、what? to go into the store. <laughs> wow! I was like, oh, I could actually go in because I saw the store before、um, in another location, and there are people like standing outside scanning codes, having the clothes come to them, and I was like, no, I need to try them on. So anyway. Small win. <laughs> exciting, yeah! Exciting little news. So, sounds like a win. A win <laughs> is a win. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about yourself.、Um, where are you from? How long have you been in China? Because it's been many years now. And also tell us like where you're at now, and、um, and then we'll jump into your relationship. Okay. So、um, I'm from Durham, North Carolina.、Um, I have been in Shanghai, China, for eight years. I've been in China a little longer. I think if you add like all of my time together, it's probably closer to like getting closer to nine years. But I'm just gonna say eight years、um, in China. About and I majored in Chinese.、Uh, I majored in Chinese studies in college. So that's why I even came to China because I wanted to learn Mandarin Chinese. So I just wanted to keep learning. So after I graduated, I kept coming back to China. Like I left and then I came back. And、um, I stayed here basically, so that's kind of like the main reason that I've been here is to learn Chinese, and it's kind of like <laughs> caused me to stay here forever because I'm always like, oh no, I can learn a little more. Like, oh no, I, I can learn a little more. I don't feel like I've learned enough, and now I'm just like, okay, I think I'm just gonna be here forever. I don't know when I'm leaving.、So. I mean, it's paid off. You're fluent in Chinese, so that is. <laughs> I mean, it's paid off well. Thank you. Oh,、well, I'm still working on it, but yeah,、I've, I'm. I'm being in Shanghai is a little different than like being in other cities where you're forced to speak to everyone in it. 
because I've never been like Shanghai is the first city I've been in where there's so many foreigners and I can like have a whole like huge group of friends who are all from different countries outside of China it's just like a little overwhelming sometimes but yeah do you find it's you have to fun. go out of your way to find like people to speak in Chinese with or like make people speak Chinese with you I feel like because of where I live in Shanghai it's a little easier because the city center it's like if it's like if you live in the city center, you're in a different part of Shanghai. Like if you talk to people in Chinese, they'll switch to English. And I'm like, whoa. But out here, they expect you to know Chinese or like they're not going to try to speak English with you. They're just they just talk to you in Chinese and you kind of have to figure it out if you don't know. Um, but yeah, but I'm I'm not so far from the city center, but I'm I'm far enough that okay yeah I think the average foreigner like you live out here you definitely know some Chinese (laughs) nice nice um and so you just got married with your partner congratulations yes congratulations thank you it's very (laughs) exciting uh but let's rewind and start how did you guys first meet in China and I guess you met in China right and who made the first move Okay, so the way we met in China, it's funny because right before I met him, I was like done with guys and dating. I was like, I'm just going to wait until I go back to the U.S. to find someone because it's so hard. Um, But that's like a whole nother topic. Um, So he actually so there's a group that I started with um, uh, someone that I knew. We started a group called vegans of shanghai so it didn't th- th- we didn't have that name at first it was literally just a debate group to debate you know veganism you know among vegetarians and, and vegans and it turned into this community group where we like had events and we'd meet up with other people and he joined this group now i still don't remember how he found out about this group i think he said a, he there was a friend he went to some type of an event and a friend added him in the group and he added me and he added the other admin of the group because he was a new vegan and he didn't know like, you know, what can I eat? What can I not eat? I, I don't know how this stuff works. And so we just started hanging out like, okay, you know, I'll show you where stuff is. And we would talk a lot. And oh, I don't know. You're like his vegan guide. Yeah, I was his vegan guide. And I didn't think much of it, to be quite honest. Like, I didn't even think like, oh, you know, I really like this guy. Like, it, it was just sort of like, oh, you know, we just like our conversation flowed very easy we would talk like until like super late at night and again I didn't think anything of it um and I think yeah he definitely made the first move he like one night at my apartment um yeah one night he was at my apartment and um he wouldn't leave and I'm just like why won't you get out of my apartment (laughs) he's gonna hate me for how I'm telling the story but anyway um yeah, no, I I don't remember exactly what happened, but like he likes try he wanted to kiss or something, so we ended up kissing. So that's how that's how that started. But it was it was me like it's super late and you're still here. Why? <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of guys like uh, listening to this right now and just writing this down. Like, okay, pretend to be vegan. No. Check. <laughs> Okay, I'll know that I'll remember Hang that. Hang out move. at her apartment. Yeah. Wait for the time to kiss her. Yeah. Vegan? No, what but he is, was... is that a country? <laughs> what is that? Is that a country? No, but he was like really good with other things because I had like foster cats at the time. I was like fostering a lot of animals. And he would like pick up the cat, take the cat all the way to like take the taxi all the way to like a specific vet, like super far away from me. Pay to pay for the taxi there and back. And I was like, oh, you know, do you want me to pay for the taxi for you? He's like, oh, no, it's fine. Wow. Like, oh. He liked that's, you. That's love. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> and for you, were you kind of like, oh, that's a really nice friend. That's so nice. <laughs> yeah, probably. I was like, wow, that's like really sweet. Like he all he really likes animals, you know, because he, he was because I had a there's another story I have. It's like a, a cat who had um. I forgot what it's called, but it's some type of virus for feel, some type of feline virus that's like really messes up the cat and the cat would get diarrhea and he would clean up the cat's diarrhea. Wow. Now that is like, because I, I've never heard any <laughs> testament to love as strong as that one. That is it. 
We'll never no. top this. No matter how many episodes of Date Night China we do <laughs> from now on, cleaning if you're up clearing cat up diarrhea. cat diarrhea, then <laughs> that is the ultimate sign of love, surely. Oh my God. It was, ter- it was terrible. Because I had to go to work and he and the cat was like, wow. <laughs> 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 was like, Just a lot of shit on the I, floor and you're, and you're like, and you're peacing out. You're like, see you later. And he's like, I was okay. mortified. He's like, oh, it's okay. I'll clean it up. I was like, okay. Okay. <laughs> so then from there you like kissed and was it like kind of official immediately after that? Or was it a bit no. slower? It was a little slower. Um I still didn't want a boy like I still didn't want a boyfriend. I was like, I still don't know. <laughs> so there's like this whole thing where he talked to a friend of mine at the time. Um like, oh, what should I do? I don't understand why she's pushing me away. Cause I was really, I was being very mean to him. I'm not going to lie. I was, I didn't want him to like get close to me or anything. So I was being intentionally rude. Cause I wanted him to leave me alone <laughs> and like stop pursuing me. And, um, one of my, one of my friends at the time was like, oh, you know, you should just get her something really nice, like some jewelry and then like, let her go. He's like, what do you mean? Let her go. <laughs> It's like, like, let her make a decision, like, let her, like, tell her, this is how I feel about you, you know, here's something to remember me by, and then, you know, if, if you're not interested, then there's nothing I can do about it, and he didn't trust that at all, but he was like, all right, I guess I'll do it, so he bought me this, this very cute necklace, um, and it has, like, I'm like, I have to explain all these stories. It has a square on it because I used to say to him, oh, you're such a square. And he was like, what does that mean? And I was like, oh, it means like, you're not cool. No, very old <laughs> language that I've inherited from my parents. So it had like a little square on it. And I remember he, at the time he told me when he bought it, my friend was like, what is the square? I don't, he was like, don't, he was like, don't worry, she'll understand. But anyway, so <laughs> he gives me the necklace and we have like this long, conversation and it was very it wasn't very gentle it was like very like I don't, I don't even remember how it started but he's like well whatever here's this necklace and I was like you're giving me a necklace like I was like what is this I was really confused and then he's like you know whatever if, if you're not interested then you know just you know I'm letting you make your I forgot the whole I honestly it's a blur to me just remember he gave me a necklace and he like left and I was like and I was like crying. I was like, oh my God, he got me this necklace. And he's like such a great guy. And I'm like being so terrible to him. And um, I like called him immediately afterwards. And I was like, okay, I want to date you. Like, I don't remember exactly what I said again, but I was like, okay, fine, let's do this. And wow. he like came back. He, I, he hadn't even left, I think. I think he like went down the street or something, was like waiting. Um, cause he came back immediately. He's like, Oh my God, I'm so happy. Anyway, so when we start dating. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. That's really cute. So it works. Your friend gave some good advice and it paid off. It worked. It worked. Yeah. it worked. I mean, so had you dated Chinese guys before or had you dated much in Shanghai before? How was it before meeting him? Oh, God. It was terrible. <laughs> it was awful. Like, I don't know, like on top of being a foreigner and then like being black, it's like you get like fetishized on top of being fetishized. It's like you're I have to deal with being a foreigner and people are like, oh, I want to practice English with you. But then you have guys who are like, oh, I have never tried black before. And I'm like, oh, my God, please don't say that. Like, just keep that in your head. You know, like I know that there's guys you think that way, but it's like, don't say it out loud. <laughs> they say it. Yeah. It's like they they can't like hold in what they, they just want to say it because I guess they think you're you're a foreigner and we accept we accept everything. There's no, you know, oh it's okay if you don't have a filter. No, please. Yeah, it's it's have strange, a- but like that's actually been something that's been echoed nearly with every guest that's talked about that. The the fetish fetishization of mm-hmm. being yeah. with somebody who's black. And especially yeah, I think being a black women and especially an American woman like I used to just have people like oh you must be so open you're from America open American girls you know so there's this idea like oh okay you're gonna just be very 
accepting and open sexually to like want to try anything like that was like their opening line on tan tan or tinder and you're like okay yeah it's very cringe when it's an opening line but even like there was because i lived in um a room chi which is like in in xinjiang province that was like in 2012 and even back then um actually okay so back then what worked best for me was being introduced by someone so it's almost like a type of insurance, the fact that, oh, this person knows someone that I know. So it's less likely that even if they want to act creepy, they're not going to, because it's like, I'm going to be like, you need to check your friend. So that's kind of how I was used, but like, that's how I was used to dating. But like here in Shanghai, I don't, I mean, I did have some friends who were like, oh, I can introduce you to like my brother or like my brother's friend. And I was like, I don't really want to be introduced um to anyone but um yeah back then but the thing is if you get introduced to someone it's like serious like now it's someone who wants to get married it's not just dating so it makes things a lot more complicated um because I definitely remember having conversations with guys like very serious conversations where they're basically just interviewing it the date is an interview you know would your parents accept me um you know, are you interested in having kids? Are you okay with my financial situation? You know, and a lot of like, oh, you're American. I feel like I can't really provide for you the way you should be provided for or how you're used to. And of course, in my early twenties, I was like, it doesn't matter. I don't care about money. (laughs) Yeah. That would, that would, that wouldn't fly nowadays, but (laughs) yeah, that in your early twenties. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, what a fun time that was. What what an optimistic time. Money's not a problem. Yeah, it's interesting though because like, we've had some some of our Chinese friends come on and they were sharing in one episode about like yeah, especially Chinese yeah. women we're talking about in Chinese culture like it's very different like they don't really have this idea of dating. The steps are different. The yeah. order of things. So like by the time that you're dating, you're, you you you're already a few steps ahead of where you would be in a Western relationship. So mm-hmm. it 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 seems well it's so foreign. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, a bit more serious right away, and you're like, wait, what? Yeah. Yeah 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 but yeah meeting guys online yeah i mean i feel like meeting guys online is meeting guys online doesn't really matter where you live in the world but that's fair that's yeah being a being corner yeah. yeah but you know being in china whole whole so i don't know i would inter i'd either encounter guys who wanted a super serious relationship and they're looking for a wife or guys who just want to play around there's like no in between no middle ground <laughs> like, no middle ground Hey, we we right. actually Dana Channel, we get guys that contact us looking for wives. Yeah, we we do. And we have to like correct them. <laughs> yeah. We're like, we are not a dating service. That's not what we do. Like oh my God, you should do it. <laughs> that's stupid. And charge, <laughs> and, 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 and charge a ton of money. We can make some money, I guess. Charge a ton of money. Be like, we are specialists. <laughs> Come to our matchmaking facility. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's quite interesting. Um, so then you did find your what's your what's your partner's name, by the way? Terry. I think I asked. Terry. Okay. Yeah. So you and Terry, once you did get together, you started dating. So how was that once you were kind of more together as an item where there's some kind of misunderstandings like culturally or like dating kind of what we were talking about with culture wise or because you speak like fluent Chinese, was it okay? Okay. So Terry, so Ethnically, he is, he's Chinese, but he was, ra- he was pretty much raised like a foreign kid. I don't really know how to describe his background because he was born in the U.S., but he was not raised in the U.S. He was raised in Hong Kong and Singapore, but he was in international schools. So our cultural differences are interesting because despite the fact that he was born in America, I always make fun of the fact that he's not American at all. Like, for example, today I was wearing a shirt that had XOXO on it. And he was like, what is, what did he say? What is show show or something? He was like, what is show show? And I was like, <laughs> what are you great. talking about? <laughs> he was like, that on your shirt. Like, what is that? I was like, you mean XOXO? He was like, yeah. <laughs> I, re- I, re- I recorded a video because I was like, I need to record this. I was like, repeat that again. I'm going to record it. <laughs> this, is ridiculous. this is funny. And I was like, no. And it, and then it's like weird for me to think about explaining it. I'm like, XOXO means hugs and kisses. And then he's like, but why? Where does that come from? And I'm like, I have no idea. 
I have no idea where it comes from. Like, that's just what I was like, you know, like when you get a card from your mom or your dad and they're like, you know, love mom, XOXO. He's like, no, no. I was like, okay. But anyway, we have, we have stuff like that all the time, all the time. So it's like, people are like, is he American? But I'm, I'm like, yes and no, <laughs> more no. Um, so he doesn't fit in all the way with American culture, like at all. Like, you know, if you ask him, what's a Lunchable? He's like, I don't, I don't know what a Lunchable is. <laughs> no, know? a Lunchable, yeah. come on. Which is in the oh. um, uh, one of the tests that you do to get citizenship, right? <laughs> to get the green card. <laughs> That's like the final question on the test. What is the Lunchable? What is a Lunchable? If you can pass this, a then, then you're an American citizen. There you go. Did you have them in the UK? Seriously, then? Uh, yeah, we have Lunchables, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. We're cool. We're okay. cool. Okay. okay. I don't know what a well, Lunchable we're is. <laughs> we're with it. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Wow. There's another one. There's another one. Oh, okay. So it was like the word fat ass. Cause I was like, oh, ha, ha, I'm such a fat ass or something. I was like, I think I said something like, oh, who do you think is the bigger fat ass? And I was talking about like eating, you know, like eating people food, like a lot, of food. a lot of food. Cause we were watching a show and the woman was like, oh, I'm such a fat ass. Ha ha ha. And I was like, oh who do you think's a bigger fat ass and he was like oh well obviously you because i've been working out and i was like oh <laughs> my god no <laughs> like, why would you say that you're like no <laughs> oh my god <laughs> it's one of those cultural things and you're like no that's not it tell me how you yeah, really feel <laughs> Not even sort of it. Did you give him how a talking to after that? Yeah, like, how dare you? And he's like, oh my God. He's like, I'm so sorry, but how was I supposed to know that? I was like, the, the, the context of what we were watching. He was like, oh yeah, I was wondering why they said that. That didn't make sense to me. I was like, oh God, it's because that's not what they meant. I don't, I don't know if that's a cultural thing. I'd be like, bro, bro, like, you know, like, <laughs> if you ever get asked anything remotely in that area, it's like, does my bum look big in this? You just say... <laughs> No, who's the biggest fat ass? You know, it's it's me. It's obviously me. You? No way. You, you don't need you don't that's not a cult that's that that surpasses culture, surely. Yeah, no, that's terrible. Yeah, he's very he honestly he's very honest with like weight related stuff. Like there's no I, sugar coating. I feel like with there's Chinese no. friends, they're like that so yeah. blunt. Or they're like, Oh, you look like you've gained weight. Like, or you look kind of fat today. You're like, <laughs> excuse me. Yeah. 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 I told him I was like, maybe I shouldn't say this stuff about you on the podcast because it makes you look terrible. He's like, it's okay. <laughs> Oh, oh no, don't God. worry about it. I, I, I sort of struggle to like lose weight and stuff. And uh, Rachel is the sweetest person in the world. She can't tell me if I've actually <laughs> lost any weight or if I'm just the same. I think he thinks I, I'm I, too nice. I, she's, she's way too nice. I have to go to work to find out. <laughs> the, if, your, your, your coworkers if, will if tell you. <laughs> my coworkers will tell me. <laughs> like one time oh. I was walking to the gym and I was walking back from the gym and my boss, when I first started at work in, in China, <laughs> she saw me and she's like oh where have you been and i was like oh i've just come back to the i've just come back from the gym and she's like oh because of your stomach and i'm like yeah, yes <laughs> yes that's one of the reasons thank you it's because of my stomach thank oh my you. god <laughs> no. i love the directness the directness <laughs> that's um, funny. yeah i'm sure it's quite interesting having those like cultural experiences together and also so how has it been for you being a black woman and being with an Asian man, do you guys, I know you talked a little bit about having the fetishizing, but also are there certain stereotypes? Do, do you kind of get any comments or anything about that? Um, so a lot actually comes from like the foreigner side um, in terms of like stereotypes. People ask, oh, you know, about his genitalia. Oh, is it actually small? I'm just like, I can't believe you're asking me that question. I don't know you. <laughs> it's very weird when I get that question. Um, or like some people, like especially in the Black community, people are so fascinated. They're just like, wait, so you're with an, so your partner is Asian. I'm like, yes. I'm like, that's fascinating. Like, I guess because I'm a woman, because it's more common to see like black men with like Asian wives and, and children, nobody says anything. No one's like, Oh my gosh, that's fascinating. But for me, it's like, wow, that's, that's very interesting. Like why? Um, 
And I don't know, the only thing I can think of is black women tend to mostly date black men. So they're already like in this like super niche specific pool of people that they, they prefer to date. Um, my family is somewhat mixed in some regards. So I'm definitely more open. Um, I, I never really had a specific restriction, you know, I'm only going to date this certain type of person, but, um, yeah, I don't, in terms of like seeing other couples, I think I know of maybe two black women who have, um, an Asian partner or Asian husband, and I don't really know them very well. They're kind of just like in my circle and, you know, I'll just like comment on their pictures, like, Oh, looks like you guys are having fun. (laughs) But, uh, in terms of like the comments we get when we're walking around. I think a lot of people don't know we're together. <laughs> I think a lot of people don't know we're together. Like even in my um, my TikTok videos, when I was kind of going over the whole lockdown situation and doing mini vlogs, I kept asking, like there are obviously a lot of people who are like, oh, they would just assume he's my husband. But then I'd have comments that were like, so are you two dating or like, who is that guy who's in your vlogs? Why is he always in your videos? Why is he like, why are you live together? Like, why are you like cuddling on the couch? I don't understand. This relationship does not compute. Um, I was like, yeah, no, that's. People think you're being really committed to um, uh, being an online celebrity. It's like, wow, this girl is like, she's like living it. She's not just doing like a nine to five. Like (laughs) these actors are just like together all the time. It's weird. Seriously. Um, But then I even had people in like my circle. So we run um, a Shanghai vegan foodies group here in Shanghai. And I would have people who were like, oh, so you two are together. I didn't know. I didn't know you two were together. I mean, I guess we don't like, You know, we're not like holding hands and kissing, but we're like always together and we run the group together. And, but I feel like if he was like maybe black or like, like non-Asian, people would probably assume that we were dating. Um, So that, that's the thing. But again, that's more in the foreign community. Now, in terms of like walking around outside, I mean, I guess there are some people who still will assume we're not together, but you have people who like the older ladies like love it. They're like, oh my God, you have an Asian partner. That's amazing. You guys need to have babies because mixed babies are so cute. Like I hear that all oh my gosh. time forever. It's like, oh my God, you need to have, they're like, you need to have a Chinese husband. I'm like, oh, my partner is, is Chinese. They're like, oh, perfect. Don't get an American husband. Not good. Oh my get a gosh. Chinese yeah. Husband. That's so interesting, though. We we did have another um, episode. We talked to another American woman who had a Chinese husband and, you know, called the Yang Shifu. And she talked a lot about like, yeah, the comments she would get from people and, and how people are surprised or like, what's going on here? Or even just like, yeah, was just a lot of interesting comments that she would get and questions she would get about like, you're married to a Chinese man. And like you mentioned, the, the questions about like, how well endowed is he? Like, is what is this about? You know, so I, I imagine there it just it's an interesting thing because it's not seen as much as the other way around, like you mentioned, with a yes. uh, foreign guy with a Chinese woman. Yeah, I've gotten free ice cream once when I was, I mean, it's, it was with a different guy, but it was an Asian guy that a Chinese guy that I was dating. And the woman was like, Oh, here's like some free ice cream. Like she was so happy to see us together. So I don't know. It was just, it's very interesting. I will just say that. <laughs> like, <"Ayo." laughs> awesome. So you just got married right when Shanghai opened up again from lockdown. So tell us about that. Why did you guys get married? Was this kind of planned for a while or was this more of a spontaneous? Let's do this. Um, so we had planned on getting married, I think, um, like at least, I don't know, maybe a year ago or two years ago, right before lockdown happened. Um, I mean, not lockdown, sorry, right before the whole pandemic and stuff happened in Wuhan. So that made everything very complicated because now we couldn't leave. So I had decided at the time that you know, we'll just wait until China opens like that. Were you going to get married in the States? Is that was what the plan was? Yeah, either in the U.S. or in Hong Kong, either one. Um, I think the time, 
you couldn't because I heard that at one point you could get married in China, like just getting the actual certificate, but you couldn't get married like um well now you can't get married as as foreigners in in Shanghai. And even though he's Hong Kong, he is still treated like a foreigner, um, outside of the fact that he doesn't need a visa to stay here. So um that was that was the main thing. So um, I ended up like losing my job <laughs> a little bit during the, the whole lockdown situation. So I was like, okay, instead of trying to scramble to find a, a new job, which I was like, I'll still apply and apply for jobs. So I was like, why don't we just do spousal visa? So that way, you know, I can kind of do what I want to do and I don't need to like be tied down to a specific company. So that was kind of what initiated, all right, let's do it now. Like, like just get it, get it done with. The date that we picked was the, the soonest date to do the ceremony. So we went through with a certificate. Um, so this is an online marriage in Utah. So we went and did the certificate already. And they're like, all right, in order for the certificate to be valid, you need a ceremony. I was like, all right, let's just do a quick ceremony. And the first date was, that was available was June 1st. And I was like, oh, that's funny. That's supposed to be the day that lockdown ends. And at the time I was like, huh, yeah, we'll see if we, like our side comes out because we had the worst numbers. But uh, so we decided, yeah, sure. June 1st, just grab a couple of our friends to be witnesses and <laughs> let's just let's just do it. It wasn't supposed to be this big, like, all right, let's do vows and exchange rings. We couldn't get rings. We're in lockdown. <laughs> so I just had my engagement ring. Like the guy asked, he's like, do you guys have vows? I was like, uh, no. He's like, do you have rings? I was like, um, we have my engagement ring. That's not really, that's, you don't exchange an engagement ring. So it was very quick. It was just like, I do, I do. And then my friend's like, my friend, and then his friend, like, yeah, we saw it. <laughs> oh, wow. I, see, I didn't yeah. know that even like Zoom weddings, I guess that's the way to kind of get around the rule. Like you were talking about foreigners can't get married in China anymore. So I didn't even think yep. like online still an option, right? So you just have to have that's an insane. option. I didn't know that. So you yeah. just can have an officiant and it just has to be from a, you know, somebody ordained or whatever to, and then you need witnesses. Oh wow! Yep. So you, you could have like a team. Zoom. You could have a Zoom party. Invite all your family and friends. Is that what we need to do? <laughs> <laughs> you can we, do. We, yeah. We've, we've talked about it because we we know so many other expats though, and they're like for functionality reasons and practical reasons, we want to get married in China because of you know spousal visas and a lot of other things. It just makes it easier sometimes when you're connected to that person. But they've hit these roadblocks about not being able to get married in China anymore when you used to. So. We're going to recommend people go the online route. Yes. <laughs> wow. And so how was your family respond? Did they know that you were getting married and, and they know Terry, right? Were they kind of like, oh, no, yeah. wait, wait, wait until you come home or the Hong Kong? Or were they like, oh, OK, we get it. Yeah, no, they um, they were like, oh, OK. My sister was like, oh, you're just getting married for a certificate. OK, yeah, whatever. You know, and my dad was like, oh, okay. He was like, but he was like, it's a real wedding though. He's like, don't treat it like uh, it's not a real thing. You're actually officially married now. Like you're legally bound to each other. <laughs> I was like, but yeah, but it's still, it hasn't like clicked that we're married because, you know, like even today he was like, you know, talking about me being his girlfriend. I was like, I'm not your girlfriend. He was like, oh, I, the, my wife. <laughs> I'm your wife now. Excuse you. I'm your wife. Yeah, seriously. So I was like, I think we need the actual ceremony and we need the family to be there. So it's like official because like yeah, just a sheet of paper. Real. That's everyone does that before the actual ceremony anyway. Like they mm -hmm. already go and apply for the certificate. So I was like, that's all we did. But like the wedding is probably still not going to it's still not going to happen until the borders <laughs> open. Yeah. Who so knows when that will be. Mm. Yeah. Right? I mean, I'm like, I might have, have a wedding you... in two years. Yeah, oh, it's a long time away. <laughs> how long have you and Terry actually been together now? Five years. Five years. Wow. Oh my yeah, gosh. So you guys have been long. together for a while and lived together and all and all of that. So do you feel like you basically were already kind of in this like partnership and domestic partnership and all of that? 
Yes. Um, yeah. Pre- yeah. I mean, cause I'm like living in his like apartment and <laughs> we have three dogs and wow. Three, <laughs> three. We've been through okay. two now lockdown type situations. So this one was just like a real lockdown, but previously, you know, we didn't leave the apartment for uh-huh. like two, three months. And so now another two months. Do you feel like that changed or like challenged your relationships in, in some ways, even the first time? And now you mentioned the second time. How was it being locked in together for two or three months? I feel like it didn't do anything. Like when people ask, I'm like, I don't, we are really introverted homebodies. Like we are at home a lot of the time. So <laughs> you, you didn't notice. I'm like, you it literally really did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it literally did nothing <laughs> just like uh okay um I think like maybe we had I like argued with him about like the time we're supposed to go get like our swabs done or like antigen testing or something I'm like what? or like we went outside and it was raining and I was like you didn't get an umbrella and it's raining <laughs> I don't know just stupid stuff <laughs> like it's the little stuff that that most couples or even friends stuff that we would all like yeah but no but i feel feel that though like when when um, (laughs) we've all come back to work this week and i am so salty about it i am so like just quietly seething i was sat at my desk the other day and i was just all the time thinking this is stupid i don't know why anybody needs to be anywhere like you know we have the internet in the this is the future (laughs) We don't need to be anywhere. <laughs> like, is, why Why am I here? This is a hot take and quite controversial oh. for Nathan, but Nathan loved lockdown time. I mean, in Beijing, it was not severe mm-hmm. like it was for you guys. Absolutely. We were just work from home, couldn't dine in anywhere. But he was like, yes, I don't have to go to the office. The office is so stupid. Why do we need to go out? I so. love the work. It's just, I think like, you know, I think lockdown is 20, you know, the coronavirus has shown us that, uh, that being in person in an office, it's an illusion. You know what I mean? Like we, it's yeah. a digital era and, and, you know, I'm waiting for the metaverse. I'm just waiting for that metaverse to kick in <laughs> and then I am there. Um, so tell us, what are your future plans now that you are married? I know you're talking about a future um, wedding sometime when things open up. Are you guys going to plan to stay in Shanghai for a while? Um, yeah, so I think part of the reason we're going to stay here for a while is because like, he has an apartment here in Shanghai. So he's like very... Um, he's very against like moving <laughs> because he's like, I have an apartment here. Why are we moving? <laughs> Look, I don't... <laughs> I don't understand. Like we moved somewhere else. And now we have to pay rent and we don't have to pay rent now. So, but That's I did fair. tell especially him. Especially in Shanghai. Um, yeah. And especially in Shanghai. Cause um, yeah, apartments are outrageous here, but um, he has a lot of family in Ningbo and Ningbo province uh, in Ningbo city. And I'm like, we could move there. I don't know. Like part of me, I don't really want to be in Shanghai forever. Like it's a nice city, but I don't like, if I wanted to have a family and stuff, I don't, first of all, we don't know if it will, will stay in China. Um, we both talked about like moving to, you know, moving to a different country, but in terms of like the near future, definitely staying in Shanghai, not leaving, <laughs> not leaving for a while, um, at least a, another few years or so, but yeah, that's a that's a fun thing about living abroad is you get to this very weird place where you're just like, I don't want to go back. Like I don't I'm I have no plans of like moving back to the States, but then it's like I don't know where I want to go next. But then it's like I don't want to stay in China forever. So or at yeah, least that's my current that. feeling. I like that. I can't see myself getting old here, you know, like little old Shanice walking around. Meow. Like I can't <laughs> I can't see I, that. <laughs> maybe it'll happen but right now totally we feel the same way and i feel the same i mean from america i just Mm. i don't see myself wanting to really go back there i miss my family and my friends but i don't see that as the next thing going back there but i don't see myself staying old in china either so yeah we're trying to figure that out i feel like so many expats now are like yeah what are the next steps do i go home do i want to leave china it's been a big expat exodus recently so i think the question's like on a lot of people's minds right now Mm. Yeah, mm. for sure. Yeah. 
So for you and Terry, I mean, if you were going to give any advice for other couples dating interculturally or even being in a uh, black woman and Asian male kind of relationship, would you give any kind of advice for others? Uh, Make sure that your partner's family is fine with you being black before you get serious. I actually did not go that route, which I don't, usually I'm very like, are your family, is your family okay with me being black? Cause I was like, I don't need any surprises. Um, Cause I remember when he like introduced me to his family for the first time, I was like, do they know I'm black? And he's like, no, but they won't care. And I was like, okay. And they didn't, <laughs> but still it's like <laughs> one of those things like make, sh- make sure you ask, especially when I was much younger, I was very naive about that type of thing. Like, oh, it's okay. Love is love. It doesn't matter if his family doesn't approve. Yes, it matters. Ask. And if he says that they're not interested, you know, they're very racist or whatever, run. Like, just be like, I'm sorry, this is not going to work. Don't give yourself that headache. It's not worth it. Yeah. Have Um, you had experiences where that actually has happened? Like with previous Chinese partners? Or friends. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, one of my one of my more serious relationships in the states when I was like in high school, um, I ended up dating this this um, Chinese guy, ABC American born Chinese, so no cultural issues. He knew what Lunchables were, but um, <laughs> yeah, that was that was kind of like I kind of was like, and I really liked like nerds and stuff, and he was really good at math, so that's how that kind of flourished. Hello. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I liked all the nerdiest guys in my class. It's kind of embarrassing, but so yeah, no, his parents were very racist. At least his mom was, she was like, oh, she's black. Like they got in like hard, like really intense fights where he had to leave the house and like, yeah, I think his mom like would pull various like sharp objects on him and he would have to leave. (gasps) Yeah. Holy shit. It was intense. It was intense, the type of fighting that they did. So, yeah. So was meeting um, Terry's family okay? Was was anything, or were they more, more curious about you just being a foreigner in general? So his family in Ningbo, his grandma was, it's funny. He says he was most worried about his grandma, which I find funny because she like loved me. She's like, oh, I was, I was just worried you wouldn't know Chinese. She's like, but you know Chinese, so you're basically Chinese now. You're just like a, like, she'll just, she'll just constantly ask questions. Like, do you guys have, like, she won't even just say, do you have this in America? She'll be like, do you have this in Shanghai? Like, she's like, you guys don't have this in Shanghai, do you? We only have this in Ningbo. Wow. <laughs> so she's very cute. Um, constantly trying to feed me food. I was like, I need to do a compilation video where it's just her constantly coming in. Like, here's more food. Here's more food. And us being like, stop, please, (laughs) please stop giving us food. Like it was ridiculous. She gave us so much, like I panned to like all the food she gave us. And then her coming in and Terry being like, no, stop giving us food. And she's like, no, you need. And she like gets angry. She's like, no, you need to eat it. And this food is (laughs) all the fruit is going to go bad. If you don't eat it. (laughs) that's how she gets you she knows she can guilt you and don't let the food go to waste she'll guilt you and then she'll start laughing (laughs) she's like "Ah." (laughs) but you got grandma's approval that's good yeah no grandma's very sweet and I met his mom mom is really cool doesn't bring up anything about me being American because I mean his his nuclear family I mean they lived abroad they lived in the U.S. and other places so they're not phased by me being a foreigner being black they're just like oh whatever I don't know how his dad feels I have not met his dad still but his mom's cool Mm. yeah I can imagine as well like you mentioned the the Chinese speaking Chinese probably helps a bit for that kind of relationship to be able to have to be able to have that connection and talk to his family as well or some foreigners in those kind of relationships they're like okay now we can't even we can't bond or communicate that's difficult that's true because his mom like his mom speaks English but she like speaks to me in Chinese because she I mean she's most comfortable speaking in Chinese so every once in a while she'll like add in an English word but um yeah yeah, I actually I can't even imagine what our relationship would be like if I didn't know 
Chinese, I think would be very different. Like even my relationship with Terry would be very different because he wouldn't like so much of like what we bond over and like jokes that we show each other is like Chinese. Like even watching like funny Chinese dramas and making fun of how ridiculous they are. They don't have any English subtitles. So it wouldn't work if I didn't know any Chinese. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's sweet. Yeah. Would you have any um, final words for anybody, I guess, then who is going to be in this kind of intercultural relationship? Learn about the language and the culture, please. <laughs> please, like at least make the effort. I mean, the number of people I've met who they're using Google Translate to like talk to their partners and, you know, getting translators to help them with fights. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. <clears throat> Especially if you're making the money and you live abroad in China, you have the money for a tutor. Get a tutor. Like, and you, and like, especially if you live in China, you have no excuse. Get the tutor you can start learning Chinese like now. So don't just hop because I'm the number of people I know who get in relationships or they're dating and they're just like, yeah, he needs to learn English. I'm like, no, you need to learn Chinese. You're in China. Like, come on, come on. Or at least there needs to be some type of middle ground, you know, don't just be like, oh, he needs to learn my language. Cause obviously we're just going to move to the U S and it's like, you're missing so much. You're missing out on a lot, like not even in terms of communication, just like culture, ability to connect with their family. Um, don't be a stubborn, like, especially for Americans. Don't be a stubborn American. <laughs> Learn another There's language. too many stubborn Americans here, like way too, too many. many, too many, like to the point where sometimes when I meet new Americans, I'm like, OK, you know, like it's that thing of like, oh, I don't really want to hang out with some Americans. Like too obnoxious, all the things. Ugh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But. Well, thank you for coming on the show. It's been a delight talking to you. Thank you ever so much. Yeah. How can people find you and follow you on your social media accounts? Um, so they'll probably need the spelling on your article, but it's just this is Shanice, C H A N I E C E. Um, on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, but my YouTube is very inactive. I'm sorry, I'm trying. But um, <clears throat> I feel yeah, like you're very three. active on everything else, though, and even Twitter. <laughs> like you are, you are there, so you can follow her, find Shanice on on Twitter, all the oh, things yes. that she just mentioned. So uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for joining us, and congratulations yeah. on just getting married. Yes, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. So thank we you will so see much. you guys. Yeah, thank you for listening to this week's episode, and uh, we'll catch you guys next week. Bye. Bye.